Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joe. Today I'd actually like to invite you to join me on a tour to the cactus and succulent greenhouses of the Palmengarten, the Palm Garden in Frankfurt. So school classes actually come here to look at the wonderful collection of cacti and other succulents. Just look at this group of Echinocactus grisonis, the golden barrel cacti, just fantastic. Nice to see here as well how they're, uh, they're growing in a way that they're all facing, you know, the central growth axis facing towards the sun, towards the south here on the Northern Hemisphere. We're standing in front of the entrance now of the Tropicarium and some wonderful flower arrangements outside. Here's the main door. It's the dry tropical zones. Come on, let's go. They have an amazing collection here of quite old cacti and succulents and they've actually assembled them in a number of greenhouses by climate zones. So let's enter the greenhouse that has specialized on the semi-arid, semi-deserts. It's a great setup that they have here. There's uh, a whole range of South American cacti. Wow, look at this huge Echinopsis, Echinopsis shiloensis. I'll just move up to show you. It's actually this very large columnar cactus here. This Echinopsis, pretty impressive. They have a whole collection of Cleistocacti, Cleistocactus acanthurus. There is a Cleistocactus brucae. And in flower at the back there, that's Cleistocactus semipatanus, a really beautiful group of currently flowering cleistocacti. Look at that whole arrangement. All the little red dots, individual flowers. We've got a number of Oreo cereuses here as well. Oreo cereus loicotrichus. Most of these are from Peru and northern Chile. There's an Oreo cereus maximus. It's a very nice plant. A 
again, quite a big, quite a large specimen here. So what's really beautiful about the uh, cactus and succulent greenhouses of the Palmengarten is that in this case, they've not actually divided up, if you like, by continents or by, let's say, cacti versus other succulents or so. Uh, they've actually decided to use climatic zones, vegetation zones, as the sort of common denominator. And so they've got a number of greenhouses, each with a separate climate of its own. And then they've assembled various succulent plants and other plants that are specific to that climate, that vegetation zone. And inside these sort of uh, climate zonal greenhouses, they have then subdivided by regions. So within this particular greenhouse here, there is a region that actually looks at Mexican succulents and there is a region that looks at South American ones at, and so on. And look at this fantastic specimen of an aloe dicotoma. I find these are among the most beautiful aloes. Look at the bark of these aloe trees. Isn't that absolutely magnificent? The color of that bark and the uh, texture next to the green of the aloe comes out very well. Let's just move across here. There's Espostoa, Espostoa lanata. And a Stetsonia corine. Various Hageocereuses and Cloister cacti. And some beautiful blue Pilosocereuses, Pilosocereus azureus. So the blue Pilosocereus. Wonderful plant. In the center of this arrangement here, there's a massive Apuntia tree that is towering over the rest of the vegetation here. I'm just looking over to the label. That's a Apuntia elatior, originally from the northern part of South America, but also Central America. And of course, these Apuntias have been uh, spread to other parts of the world by now, but originally, of course, from the Americas. The blue of the uh, Piloso Cereus Azureus just comes out nicely when the sun actually uh, shines on the plant. They've got a huge palm growing here as well among the succulents. Look at this towering Cereus. What is it? It's the Cereus Jamakaru. That's relatively commonly grown in collections, hobbyist collections, way up there. About four meters, five meters height. There's a number of flowers that you can probably just about make out there. Very interesting glass construction here again as well. So the glass 
steel construction is again made such that burning of the plants is minimized, the risk of burning is minimized, and uh, the technique they're using here is to actually have an angle between the different glazings. And in that way, again, the sunlight is actually dispersed quite nicely into the inside of the house. The climate in the greenhouse is, again, electronically controlled. So it's always kept at quite a narrow range of day and night temperatures. And uh, amazingly, inside these large steel beams is where the temperature, the either cooling or heating air is actually transported up to this massive central vent. And uh, you can see that just about here. This is where the air, either heated or cooled, comes into the uh, greenhouse. More cleistocacti. Cleistocactus brookery. Cleistocactus brookery. Wonderful spinal colors. Oh, and here's the so-called blue cactus, Browningia hertlingiana. more of this columnar species, columnar cactus species. And maybe you can just see it towards the back. Let me just zoom out. There is a huge cereus that is growing in this corner of the greenhouse. It is probably about eight meters, almost 10 meters in height and it is huge it's flowering it's got a lot of flowers and uh, buds let me just see if i can find the name of that one on the uh, plant itself there's some very large yucca nice collection here And we've got more South American cacti. Here's a whole group of parodias. Parodia Leninghausi. Parodia claviceps. And we've got to look upwards now again. A very large Pilosotsoreus pachycladus. This one's called. Wow, all the way up, just about to hit the roof of this greenhouse here. Pilosotsoreus pachycladus. Some hechtias from the family of bromelias. And uh, this is a beautiful Pachycereus, Pectin aboriginum. Again, towering, probably about six meters high here. Now, if we swing around, there's a nice rock landscape that's been uh, put in place here again with various cacti like Pachycereus weberi I'm just moving up to show you that one again all the way up to the roof of the greenhouse and there's Puya Puya plants as well from the uh, family of bromeliads 
very interesting as well to see that among the cacti they also have a large number of bromeliads actually growing here Hechtia stenopetala here that's a beautiful bromeliad It's a very interesting Pachycereus here, Pachycereus militaris it's called, and uh, let me just swing up here towards the top. I don't know if you can actually see that, but there is a cephalium, so that's the part of the plant from which flowers would be developing. That one actually looks like a crested cephalium on the left, and there's a regular shaped cephalium so to speak there's that crested cephalium again and then there's pilosocereuses here again with the cephaliums very well developed these woolly zones from which the flowers would be developing. It's a beautiful collection here. It's a magnificent succulent collection here in Frankfurt Palm Garden. And uh, I was just actually, just had an opportunity to talk to the head gardener of the cactus and succulent uh, greenhouses. And it was really interesting talking to him about some of the challenges that he faces here. Uh, two main challenges of the recent years really that he mentioned, which I thought I'd just uh, share with you. One is, sadly, around uh, theft and vandalism. Uh, apparently over the last few years with sort of this hype of around cacti and uh, other succulents, more and more people are actually going into botanical gardens and uh, are starting to, you know, break off parts of plants, entire plants that have been dug up and removed from the botanical garden greenhouses here. He said that, you know, despite having video cameras and, uh, and all kinds of uh, precautionary uh, mechanisms here, still people break in, they uh, remove plants. Very sad to hear. This is a branch that he was saying, you know, they've been waiting for for several years now to actually, uh, for this to develop. 
new shoots and leaves, and every time they appear, um, they're broken off by visitors again. So, you know, vandalized. And around vandalism, something that he mentioned specifically around this uh, allo uh, dichotoma is, uh, again, quite sad, really, because he said that, you know, there's loads and loads of imprints, people just writing with pens and uh, uh, scratching with pocket knives, their names, and, you know, all kinds of, basically, um, injuries that these plants are uh, receiving. And um, he was saying that they're losing a lot of plants because during the winter months, especially when the plants are not able to actually naturally protect themselves properly, especially against pests, but specifically also against uh, viruses and fungi, these plants are extremely vulnerable. And the moment that their epidermis is scratched and opened and um, fungi can actually uh, enter the plant, then that leads to a uh, infection and it leads to a gradual slow death from the inside of these partly massive very old plants and he says that you know they've lost large plants aloes uh, like the aloe dichotoma um, where the injury actually happened in the way that I just described it and then the plant itself actually died about five or six years later from those injuries and the open uh, spaces on the epidermis where the fungi actually entered. So really sad and uh, quite shocking really to hear that. You can actually see that, you know, above the height, let's say, of, uh, of an adult, that's also where these uh, damages to the plants then stop because people can't reach up there anymore. So in a way, you know, pristine bark further up on the plant. And then as you go down to where, you know, humans can actually reach, you start getting all the scratches and uh, puncture marks, if you like, and damages that then open the plant up to uh, fungi, and uh, other pests. The other element that he mentioned that he has as a real challenge is around, you know, climate change. And um, he says that never ever have the greenhouses heated up as much as they have in the recent years. And it's a real challenge, a real issue to try and keep the temperatures to a level where plants you know can still survive even cacti and other succulents are um, you know they have an upper limit to temperatures that they can actually stand and um, he says that they've had a large number of plants actually because of this extreme heat despite all the ventilation and aeration and their cooling and all that uh, but still they've got a lot of plants that they're losing because of these extreme heat at these extreme temperatures. And it's quite interesting, he was saying that, you know, in their natural habitats, uh, temperatures might go to 45 or so, maybe 50, close to the floor, uh, close to the ground. So where rocks are heating up in the sun, it gets extremely hot. But it's very rare to have temperatures of 45 or, or higher degrees centigrade you know, at the height of uh, maybe one or two meters above the ground where there is always also a breeze. And those temperatures in the greenhouses, of course, do reach significantly above that during these uh, uh, hot periods that we've been having in these extreme summers of the last years. Well-known Opuntia microdasis. Another Apuntia, this one is Rufida, Apuntia Rufida. As we 
move around the corner here. We are getting a glimpse of uh, a fantastic group of Echinocactus grusones. The size of these is just impressive. Again, these are these are massive individual specimens, and I'm guessing they're way over 100 years old each. Certainly, these big ones here. So next to the Pachycereus pringles. There is also Ferrocactus glaucusens, Ferrocactus hustrix, and uh, these are all plants from the Mexican Baja California. And then we swing around, and we're actually in Africa. Here's the first group of aloes. Allo raizi. So these are the semi arid, arid area plants of Africa, mainly southern Africa. And here's another super interesting succulent. It's the elephant foot Dioscorea elephantipus. And this is one heck of a specimen. This is about almost two feet high and two feet across. Look at that bark. Unbelievable. And then the vines that towards the end of the year, after the uh, dry, hot summer in the autumn period, you get these vines with these beautiful light green leaves emerging and then the plant actually out of its caudex forms this wonderful yeah bush you can say it looks like a huge shrub a bush of uh, you know lush green leaves all emerging from this fantastic caudiciform plant this caudex basically a water storage and it's got this very thick bark which also protects it against the uh, super harsh climate and uh, environment that it lives in. Very nice. Crassulas, there's Gasterias, there's actually a whole series of Pelargoniums. Yeah, Pelargoniums also uh, coming from southern parts of Africa, many of them at least. And they're, they can be grown quite nicely together with cacti. And uh, I've got a whole collection of these in my greenhouse as well. They've got beautiful leaves and flowers. Some of these uh, South African pelargoniums really have wonderful flowers. This is a uh, hybrid across of pelargonium seeduides and reniformi. Aloe littoralis. There's aloe vera, the well-known aloe. Now here's an unusual plant. What's this one called? Aloe, aloe ampelos, aloe ampelos tenur. 
and it caught my attention because it's actually in flower and it's got these wonderful orange flowers here look at that beautiful Now here's another succulent, very typical for the southwestern part of uh, the African continent, Namibia. Sifostema, this is Sifostema curori, a close relative to Sifostema ute, which uh, was featuring in my Berlin Botanical Gardens tour. This one here. This Sifostema, Sifostema curori, I would say even more impressive, even more massive. There's an annex greenhouse here that is specialized on succulents that live in the very foggy, fog uh, influenced areas so coastal areas of uh, the southern parts of Africa, spe specifically around Namibia and uh, also Western South Africa. And the door is locked right now. It's the Fog Desert House, as it says here. And there is the most amazing Velvicia collection that I have ever seen in there. It was open briefly the head gardener that i was talking to was kind enough to open that the greenhouse for a very short tour just for myself and um, you know i was able to see the velvicias that uh, are growing there quite a collection and uh, quite a number of them are actually grown from seed from 1986 Again, sadly, because of theft and vandalism, uh, the opening hours to this Velvicia and Fog Desert house um, quite restricted. But just as well, I would say, to really ensure that these incredibly valuable collections of plants are not actually lost to you know, people who really do not respect and show respect to plants. To give you an impression of the size and the just layout of this collection here in Frankfurt, I'm just going to walk through with the camera. Starting from this central group of golden barrel cacti, I'm going to just swing across one of the pathways here and just walk through to give you an idea 
of the totality of this greenhouse with its cycads, the African succulents from Crassula to Cyphostema, aloes, and then back to the cacti, the South American species, these massive Echinopsis, very, very impressive. And then on to the Mexican succulents, among them cacti, agaves, yuccas, there's the Pachycereus group. And here we are again back at the uh, wonderful group of golden barrel cacti. I must say it's been a fantastic day here at the Palmengarten in Frankfurt. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the tour as much as I did. This is really another fantastic cactus and other succulent collection with plants that are just in fantastic health, a uh, unbelievable selection of uh, families and genera and species. If you enjoyed the video, then why don't you just please give me a like. Also feel free to just drop a comment. And if you haven't already done so, I'd really appreciate if you actually subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for dialing in again and for joining me on this fantastic tour through the Palmengarten cactus and other succulent greenhouses. And I hope to see you soon again. Stay safe, take care, and happy growing.